I want to talk about both of those, your advice and the tea, because you know, I mean, the tea is piping hot, Hannah. Yeah. Let's, let's start with Peter, because there's so many, <laughs> I've seen so many articles talking about Peter, your revelations in the book. Walk the readers through what they're going to see, what they're going to learn about, about you and Peter after The Bachelorette. Yeah, um, the, the story goes way after and um, far beyond just uh, what you saw on television and that we had a connection after the show while his season of The Bachelor was still airing. And um, I think people will be shocked by it because it's it's not something that was prior knowledge to anyone. It was kind of like a secret that I kept to myself of an experience. Mm -hmm. um, and really what was all happening around the same time that there was so my my relationships and my life was kind of becoming this like tumultuous tale of sorts and um how the relationships that i've had that people have seen in public how there's another side of that of it that was private and i think people are going to be really shocked yeah. um to hear yeah some of the things to hear and that to read. Happened. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, I mean, and you like, were, yeah. you went to detail and I think like us, like I felt like I was in the scene with you when you were like walking down the stairs in like Peter's sweats after you guys had hooked up yeah. the night before in his parents' house and his dad is in his robe drinking the coffee. And I'm like, oh my gosh, when you were going through that, writing it in your book, were you counseling Peter and like telling him like, this is going to be in the book or does, is he going to, did he find out with the rest of us? He did find out with the rest of <laughs> everyone. Um, but yeah, like it was just that memory was so vivid for me. So I do think I captured because I think the whole time I was like, what am I doing? Like, why have I made these decisions? Why am I here? Um, and so those moments stick with you. And I think the reason I decided to put that in the book was not just to have like, you know, people write articles about it. But I think there's a lot of girls that have had similar situations. Mm -hmm where they felt like, why did I do this? Why did I go back to this guy? Like, what what hole am I trying to fill that that is leaving me feeling worse than I did before? And that's why I really wanted this that story to be in there and why I didn't really feel like the need to, to tell everyone what I was gonna put in the book first, because it, it really, there's a, there's a bigger message that I hope that when people read it, they see it. And it's not just about the tea, which yes, there's tea there, but like can, can understand what I'm going through and be able to relate that to yeah. maybe situations they've had in the past. Yeah, so. I agree. And I think that we got that when you were talking about the moment, like watching yourself on TV say, I had sex and Jesus still loves me. Because you went, I mean, you were talking about the emotions you went through, especially like the Christian community and them, and you feeling like they were calling you out. I think that will be important for girls to see and to read and, and know like, this is what I was going through. I felt like I was being honest in my emotions at the time, but afterwards I was really conflicted like Hannah if you had to go back to that moment would it would it play out the same would you say those same words um I don't know if I would be I think there was a lot of emotions that went into that moment with Luke and um I let them get the best of me in in some like maybe how the way that I went about it but I am proud of you know being honest mm -hmm. and standing up for myself in a moment where I felt like um like somebody was trying to, you know, make me feel shame, make me feel um, like, you know, gaslighting me, you know, and, and I'm really proud of that. It's just, I think there was a lot of emotions that were, that, that also came out at the same time. But I think uh, I am really proud for that moment and how it helped a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud of the book, how it goes a little bit deeper so that, you get a, a different story and a different outlook of everything that was going on that wasn't necessarily in the media or portrayed on the show um, so that you can really see where I was because it wasn't just a, yeah, I, like everything's great. Like I'm proud of myself. I'm strong. No, there was, there were so many layers of emotions that were going on and that's the real, mm -hmm. like it, it's not just one thing ever. And um, I think whether people agreed with my decisions or not, 
can can relate to those feelings. I agree. I'm also going to ask you about uh, someone else from The Bachelor that you wrote, uh, or from The Bachelorette that you wrote about in the book, Tyler. It was interesting that, that like when you were choosing between Tyler and Jed, you were like, well, if I choose Tyler, will he reject me later? And then it played out that way later. Are you guys, do you think that you'll ever be friends? I know that you said in the book you hadn't talked for a while. Yeah, I mean, I think there was just a time where our um, relationship, we just needed some, to be able to fully move on. Because anytime that we are together or like having, like anytime people see us together, then there's all these things that are said about us. Like people are speculating if we're dating or we're not, we're friends. And I think that pressure is really hard on any type of relationship. And so there, I think there needed to be a separation for a while and there, there has been, but I know that he's super supportive of me and I'm supportive of him. But I think for both of us, we, we needed to create that space to be able to move on. Are you following along the current Bachelorette season? Michelle's, what are your thoughts on hers? Well, I think that she's doing a great job and she's come like absolutely stunning. And people that have worked on the show, like just have the best things to say about her. So I mm -hmm. am really rooting her on. I don't really watch the show anymore. Um, just I've been trying to move on with my life and sometimes watching the show is is challenging because it brings up all those feelings good and yeah. bad so I um I haven't been watching it but I am rooting for her to find oh, happiness beautiful. in whatever capacity that may yeah. be do you ever hear the news like about Zach and Tasha ending their engagement for example did you like feel for them I I saw that like late yesterday and it, it just makes me my heart go out to them because I know how hard it is to have such a public breakup and then for them like to have people really just like rooting for that relationship mm -hmm. and and it's a really private thing because I know how difficult it is when you're living you know long distance apart trying to make it work and um I just hope they have some time, like private time, to be able to heal from it and move on. And, um, you know, I just wish them both yeah. the best. Both exactly. the best. And you've also been supportive of another relationship, your brother's relationship with Jed's ex-girlfriend. What are family dinners like? Um, you know, I, it, it's definitely different and it was a shock at first, but um, I think my family is, is really important to me. And so, um, I want him to be happy, but, um, we've only been around each other like once and it was fine. Like, you know, I, I have to respect him and his decisions and whoever he chooses to love. Like I, I support yeah. that. Well, and you strike me as a person who doesn't like have awkward situations. Like when you walked up to, to Jed at the engagement party and you were like, Hey, it's good to see you. Like, it seems like you keep things pretty open. Yeah, like I, I um, thought it was important to have a conversation of where I stood with everything and was very honest about about mm. that. But I have to protect my peace and my boundaries, and um, that's in in anything, and especially when it comes to family too. Like yeah. being able, like to just tell it like it is how you feel, but it, be able to move on from that. Yeah. So. We're in a good yeah, place. Well, you're in a great place. Your one-year relationship with Adam, <laughs> so cute. How did you guys meet? We met on a dating app, Aww. and it was really me just being like silly, not like thinking much into it, but I think that's when it happens, mm -hmm. is I wasn't putting any pressure on finding anyone. I was actually like, oh, this has been kind of fun <laughs> dating around. Like, I, I already found my person, but, um, He's incredible and he's been such a cheerleader and um, somebody that I admire. And I think that's really important in a relationship to have somebody that encourages you and that you look up to and that I know that he feels the same way about me. So just really grateful that even all this mess and all the things that I talk about in the book has led me to a really amazing guy. And I hope that, you know, gives other girls uh, hope and encourages them um, on their path to finding someone that they could spend their life yeah. with. Yeah, I'm glad that you included it in the book. I know that you wrote that uh, there were some people who advised you not to, but you did, and I was glad to see it uh, when you used the N word on an Instagram Live last year. And you know, you wrote about mm -hmm. everything that you've learned since then. When it was happening, you posted and said that you wanted to be a part of the solution. What have you done since then to be a part of the solution? How do you think that that's played out? Yeah. 
Um, I was so thankful to be able to, you know, I, I think there are a lot of people who, who teach and are advocates and like spend their whole entire life, like trying to, um, not only like bridge the gap, but like move our, our society forward and, and try to teach these um like how we have these microaggressions every day like the way that we have um anti-blackness that has been like permeated in our society and how we can take you know look into our ourselves and see where maybe we can make some changes and and have these conversations so i was able to work with somebody and and paid them for their work for this to that it wasn't just a week long thing. Like we've, we've created this relationship where she sends me articles and we discuss them and we talk about, you know, my own specific like um, encounters and, and things that I'm just trying to continue to learn and educate myself, but also um, having the conversations with people around me, um, uh, some of my black friends being able to, for the first time, feel like I, not only that I can have a conversation, be a part of the station, but that like I am required for there to be um, movement and change to have conversations and listen. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the work does happen in private and it's in taking the time to read the books, listen to your friends, have the tough conversations, then also to your, with your family that might not have taken the time and having those awkward but impactful conversations and dialogue um so definitely a lot of of private work has been done but also just taking the moments to use the platform that i have to just be an advocate and raise other voices up um is, is what i continue to try to do and i am i have so much more to learn and um, know that I will make, you know, have, have to continue to learn, but I'm excited that I can, I can do yeah. that. Yeah. Last topic, Dancing Thank with you. the Stars. Did you watch or like see, have you like, you seen Amon's like final performance? Oh my gosh. I, so from the very first night, I was like, he's my favorite person Aww. to watch. Like I love Amon. He was like, I was just he, he did the uh, like, hey, y'all dance. Like it, I was like, I'm obsessed with him. And every week it was just so cool to see him progress. And what, it, from my experience, like to see that he really had fun with it. Like that's yeah. something that I think I was struggling so much but to see that like, it just seemed like he was enjoying himself, made me root for him even more. And then to watch him just progress and blossom and Honestly, I just want to shout out Daniela because I know her personally, but her choreography and how she played up their strengths was just incredible to me. And so I am just happy for both of them. Like, I think I was a little shocked because I thought JoJo was like her fandom and she's amazing as well, but it made me super happy. And um, like, we were like, me and Adam were like screaming. <laughs> we were so happy to see when he won. Aww. So, um, I'm like truly honored to be like in the same, like that I have something in relation to, to, to <laughs> him that we both had this year of all Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cause you know the struggle. I mean, with your broken toe, your bruised ribs, like you know how difficult it is to get that far. Yes, and like, I think even, you know, I was talking to Adam about like, I, I learned some stuff and I'm like, even just their height, like people don't understand, like even like in frame, like their height difference, like how much of a challenge that really was to overcome. Like, I'm just super impressed. I'm impressed by everyone who um, is on that show because I know how difficult it is. And just to see somebody like really transform and um, really like keep who he is in the competition too was, was really cool. And um, yeah, I, I love the show and, and really proud to be a part of um, what, what they do and, and the progress and the, the legacy of it. That's what I was, I was trying to find the words, like just yeah. the legacy of the people who have been on the show to be a part of that. I'm like really yeah. thankful. Yeah. Thank you for watching. If you want more extra, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you'll never miss a video.